Hello, I'm Trudy Friend and I'm going to show you how to use counter change and the use of negative shapes in your painting. I've chosen a pot plant against a wall as a simple representation and first of all it'll just be the underpainting where I place all the components prior to the finished work. So I need to choose the brushes I'm going to use and I'll start off with a medium brush. A large worker is a good size for the initial shapes. I want a green because I'll be starting with the leaf shapes that will be occurring against the background which I will keep relatively plain. So this area will be the dark against light part of the counter change. I'm mixing together two colours, the viridian and the burnt umber, to get quite a subtle green. But I'm also going to add quite a lot of water to that because the first coat is going to be my pale undercoat. I will use a pipette in another little well. and just add what's on my brush to get the pale colour. A little bit more of the green to brighten it up. I like to curve the brush round gently to make sure I've got a good point on the tip of it and also make sure nothing's going to drip down. And I'm just doing some basic leaf shapes and then bringing them back towards the main body of the pot plant. So it's my put and pull down strokes because they will define the silhouette edges of the foliage over this side. As I pull them in to the main body of the composition, I'm going to think about areas that I could leave as white paper for the moment, and later on they will be little flower heads or buds. So that could be a flower head, and there could be a smaller one there. In between these, I do a crisscross stroke. That gives a little bit of interest and sharpness to any leaf shapes that are going to cross into those flower heads. Now you might notice that it looks quite dark at the moment. What I like to do is put the initial image on dark and gently blot it with kitchen paper and that puts it back into a lighter mode and I can work on that as my undercoat. If I was to start off too pale to start with it might be a little bit difficult to see all the marks. It might be that some of these are still a little bit damp in which case I could just do a drop in which is dropping in the darker colour. If I didn't want it to blend out I could dry the brush and gently remove it by taking it back up the brush. So I'm in control really of what I put down at this stage. So taking a little bit more of the green, trying to have regard as I'm working for the overall shape, the composition. I'd like something trailing out this side I think. And perhaps another little flower head at that point. And then crisscross down. I'm not doing them in detail, this is just a very quick sketch. So it's suggesting the areas where I've got either leaves or flowers and very gently going over them. When you blot off, don't press too hard otherwise it all dries completely. But if you press gently, you can begin to see the different tones. And you can slowly add more texture and tone I'm doing it very lightly with crisscross movements down there. Perhaps a flower is going to come there. Now I'm having some regard for where the wall is going to come. It's going to be an uneven wall, it's coming down here. When I say uneven I mean I'm thinking of something like stonework. So I'll stop that there and I'm still just crisscrossing. There's a, another flower there that I could use and some more pull down strokes over here. Very gentle. Now I'm going to come through to the other side which is thinking of still light areas for any flowers but the leaves themselves are going to be much lighter when I eventually finish it so I'm going to now put the wall behind it so that I can start working out the light against dark part of my counter change. So I'm going to mix up a colour that is neutral, a little bit of French ultramarine with some burnt umber, giving me a pleasant neutral colour for the wall. And the wall's going to come down here, so an uneven edge. The paper I'm using, Saunders Waterford CP Knot, has a lovely surface for this sort of thing. It actually encourages interest of stroke and texture. I don't have to blot off if I want to. I can just wash the brush out, dry it and pull the pigment over the surface. And because the surface is so interesting, 
it's going to give me that texture of stone anyway. So I'm pulling a little bit across there. Now I want to think now of putting some of the pale tone for the wall in a way that is going to echo that, which is leaves against the background, but they're going to be light leaves. So a little bit more water so that I don't have too much pigment for this side. And I'm looking really to get quite a point on the brush so that I can very gently crisscross out and let light leaf shapes come against that wall. So quite roughly, and just crisscrossing away. So I'm representing now the light side of that pot plant. And letting it blend out into the paper by cleaning the brush, drying it slightly on the kitchen roll and blending it out into the surface. I don't want to see any definite edge, no watermark. So I let it just blend away. And you can see how I've got now the light side there. A few more light crisscross marks in the lower area. If you feel you've got too much on your brush, you can always just touch it against your kitchen roll. I'm now bringing down the side of this in a way that says there's a pot going to be added here, but we have trailing greenery coming down. It's quite profuse in this area. So they're little pull down strokes. Some of them will actually resemble leaves because of the shape of the brush. And I'm just giving myself an idea where that side's going to come. And a few more just across the top here. I'm just making sure it's very dilute. So I'll have another one perhaps coming out here and crisscrossing down. And a gentle blot now that I know where they are. Now I've got to mix the colour for the flower pot. I'm going to take light red and just mix a little bit of my neutral colour with it. But keep it very pale, so a little bit of water added to that. Working out the balance of this area and looking to put in the side of the pot there. And then thinking about any leaves that may be crossing it. Crisscross pattern allows those leaves to cross into that. The top rim of the pot can then come round. And crisscross. And then I'm thinking shadow side of pot. So I'm bringing that down ready for later when I will add a shadow to that. At this stage you can very carefully look at this indentation and take your time in working out the accuracy of it so that it works for you. You don't want it to come in too far. And then I'm going to bring the base of the pot round with a slight curve to get the right perspective angle. And keeping it quite loose and textured at the moment. And a few more leaf shapes coming into there. And the leaves can trail down on that. I might actually take it in a bit more, bit more interest there. So I've got it trailing down on that. Make sure you have the base of it curving at the right angle. You can sit back and analyse it. Then I'll just lighten it up a little so that it's just in place. So I've got the relationship now. Of a dark wall is going to come behind the light side where we have the highlight on here. The shadow side is going to have the dark leaf shapes into a, an untouched background. And then I've got the shadow side of the pot and I'll also put a cast shadow from some of the overhanging leaves later on. So while I'm having these few words with you, it is drying and I can now put in a little bit of shadow beneath. Just so that we anchor the pot. Following the curve and putting the cast shadow beneath. A little bit of crisscross where the little leaves are going to come over that. I'm not going to blot the shadow, I'm just going to take it up with a dry brush so that I know roughly where it's going to come to support that pot. 